So I'm going to give two levels. The first, the very, very big picture level is the world is awash with debt. Global debt is 400% of global GDP. It, these are bananas numbers. So what does that mean? We talk about debt a lot. What it means really is the collateral, the assets that back the system have lots and lots of people claiming on them. So if anything goes wrong, you get a fraction of your money back. Also, we're learning that banks are now bailing in creditors. So you find that the issue in the leverage world is you actually don't think, whatever you think you own, you don't actually own. It can be taken away from you. That's the real issue we're trying to solve here at a very top level. What is this smart contract business? So I want people to understand that everything humans do is basically a contract. All societies are organized by contracts. All of this can now be digital, so you don't have to trust a third party. So we're now we're away from the system of money. We're now talking about verified truth, electronically verifiable truth done by code. So that means we can then get rid of middlemen all over the place. And we've all spent too much money on lawyers. We've all spent too much money on accountants. We've all spent money with notaries. All of this stuff disappears. Things like insurance companies don't need to be insurance companies anymore. They're just contracts of payments and contracts for pooling of capital. So it's much bigger than we either of us first thought when we first saw it. People understand that the system is broken and they're looking for answers. Some people choose gold. Some people look, choose Bitcoin. People use different ways of, of getting around this. They can feel it. It's all around you. You can see it with populism. You can see it with just how markets react. So you've got this macro backdrop of debt and this fear. So that's driving adoption. And then people are finding new use cases like NFTs for smart contract stuff. That's creating a technology adoption like anything, like the internet was. And it happens to be the fastest adoption of any technology the world has ever seen, except AI, which has been faster. But... We're also finding that, that the central banks are debasing currency. They're making our money less valuable. So we're looking for things that are a store of value over time. So those two things are driving the movement of crypto. So the crypto price is based off those two issues. The adoption of the technology, as everybody's starting to build on this new tech stack, and because it solves a lot of problems. And then it's the thing that the central banks are doing, are devaluing your currency all the time. That creates a super mega trend within this. Now, it as a space is growing on average, including the bear markets, which are brutal, as we all know, it's growing at 100% a year as a space. So there are 516 million wallets as of end of last year, active wallets. If it's growing at 100%, by the end of this year, it's a billion. Then the end of the year after, it's 2 billion. because So the numbers are vast as people are adopting it. So we're getting to participate in something that has never happened for humanity, which is a global infrastructure being built by everybody around the world at the same time, and we can own a fraction of it. So this is, at an investor level, why, why it now matters to everybody, this is the first global homogenous investment product the world has ever seen that can operate like this. So it's the same product. Bitcoin is Bitcoin in India as it is in Nigeria, as it is in London, as it is in Hawaii. It's the same thing. And you can send money home to your mother in the Philippines from the United States instantaneously. And by just owning one of the tokens, an Ethereum token or whatever it is, you've got a share of it. So if more people adopt it, you get richer. This is like one of the greatest schemes the world has ever seen in creating mass wealth, not for Wall Street, but for retail, who got to front run all of this, and create a new system that solves the problem of what's the investment, uh, the, what the central banks and governments are doing, and solves the problem of an over-indebted society. I mean, that's how big it is. One was the debt cycle. That's not changing. In fact, the governments are issuing more debt to pay the interest on the previous debt. And that's pushed interest rates up and it's made it even harder. So the debt keeps going up. Okay, so we haven't solved that one.
And it's just accelerating because we're now having to pay the interest on the COVID um, bond issuance, debt issuance. So it, it's going vertical right now. So we know they're incentivized to con- t- continue this path. So that is what lies ahead. And then we've got the other sweet spot in the middle of this, which is politicians hand out candy during elections. And the candy that everybody wants is stimulus. So they will hand out stimulus, which needs to be paid for. It either ends up on the Fed balance sheet or some other liquidity measure to allow the government to fund itself. So what we've got is a high probability that our money is going to be worth less. Asset prices are going to rise, but our wages won't, which is the big problem. So we're, our future selves are getting poorer because we can't afford as many assets. And we've got this massive wave of debts to be refinanced. So that's normally a very positive backdrop for crypto. Lots of liquidity. And liquidity is what drives all markets. But crypto is the super massive black hole that sucks in so much capital when this happens. This is why people are angry, whether you're on the left or whether you're the right. You're you're angry because the system is failing you. And what's happening is you're a wage slave and you can't buy a house. Or you can't invest as much of the stock market that your parents could do. You just, A, cost of living is high, but B, asset prices keep coming up. And that's because they're debasing the currency. What an asset is, is, and it can be the same for Bitcoin or gold or real estate or equities. It's a way of putting your savings into something that you can get them back in the future. So it's your future consumptions, your future life is in those. But you can buy less of them. So your future life is getting poorer. So everybody's getting screwed over here and they don't understand why. Fancy words like debasement come along. It's like, I don't really understand what that means. It means they are robbing you of the power to use your wages to gain an advantage for yourself later in life. My view is that the issues we've been talking about, printing of money, excess debt, are going to be the feature of the next two years. How do you pay for that? And so therefore, I am very aggressively positioned in crypto because the only other secular trend there is, I can divide any assets like the S&P 500 or real estate or gold by the central bank balance sheet, the Fed balance sheet, i.e. how much money are the Fed printing or putting on their books. And most of them are pretty flat line. And you look at the NASDAQ and it's going up because there's, we're getting more digital every day, so there's endless demand. And then crypto goes up exponentially, as we know. So the fastest race, a horse in the race is crypto. So I'm actually 100% of my liquid net worth in this. And I have been actually for since 2020. And I use the bear markets to add into, because I think we are in a once-in-a-lifetime wealth accumulation opportunity for everybody, be you rich or poor, you can still put 10% of your savings in as you go. And so so I, that's how strongly I feel about it. It's not just a passing interest. It's not something I say on TV. It's something I actually truly believe in. Coinbase has 110 million accounts. They're not all the US. Let's say 50% of the US. It's probably more, of which there are about 12 million actives. And I think that'll go up. So think of those as the voters. I think it would it would help the Democrats. Um, I think whoever's going to take it, we've seen RFK take it. So that's the, the independent. We've seen um, the right, the the Republicans haven't fully embraced it. Vivek did, but we don't know where he's going to shake out. Trump's obviously made the NFTs. He hasn't made the I hate Mooch NFTs yet, but I'm sure they're coming. How I put it, how I think of it, I think there's a 60% chance that it's just a normal crypto cycle. So Bitcoin finishes 150 to 250,000. You know, I, it does a few X, the last all time highs. There's a 20% chance that because of the ETF and how the bit, how the economic cycle works, everyone gets overexcited about rate cuts, or whatever, that we kind of front load it and it's short. But then there's another 20% chance that this actually extends further than we expect because institutions and others come into the space and it broadens out. So, I think 60% chance um, normal cycle, 20% super cycle, 20% actually a short cycle. I don't like making these predictions because 
both people like you and I get beaten up over the head with it and said, why didn't it happen? Yes, I made, I, yes, yes. I, I, I've made a lot of wrong posi- predictions, which is why I want you to be wrong as well. Misery loves misery loves company, Ralph. So as long as people Look, accept hey, that I am going to be 100% wrong, I'm kind yes. of thinking Bitcoin finishes this cycle closer to 250,000. I think a lot of people are lower. I think it might be higher because of the dynamics of the ETF and other stuff. I'm pegging Ethereum right. between fifteen and twenty thousand, and I'm okay. pegging Solana between seven fifty and a thousand. So my view is Bitcoin right. starts the cycle and outperforms in the start. Then people go out the risk curve. ETH, we're going to have an ETH ETF. We'll see the market pick up there. Right. But the horse right. that's moving faster is the one that's coming from a smaller adoption base. Yeah. It moves yeah. faster. Faster, faster, smart contract network. And obviously my good friend, Anatoly, I'm rooting for him and I own a lot of that. So that's full disclosure. Both are all and I own so a lot of it. Thank you for joining us today on this insightful journey into the world of crypto and investing. If you found value in today's discussion and want to stay updated on future crypto news and market insights, don't forget to hit subscribe button below and click the notification bell. By subscribing, you'll be part of our growing community gaining exclusive access to timely analyses and strategies. I look forward to having you with us in the next video.